Welcome everybody to the Talk From The Top Show. My name is Alex and I'm your host. And our guest today is the keynote speaker and former business owner, Simon Cohen. Hi, Simon. How are you? I'm really well, thank you. So, Simon, you were the founder um, of a business and now you do a lot of keynote speaking um, on leadership and values around the world. But you gave away that successful business. Is it, um, it's referred to as the million dollar giveaway in the media. So why did you do that instead of just uh, selling the business? It's a really good question. And I do, <laughs> um, in a time of, of COVID and extra bills, and I do sometimes ask myself that very same, same question. But um, I'm really glad that I did make that decision. It felt right at the, the time and it still feels right now. I guess in order to sell something, you need to own it. And um, when you register a company with Companies House, you pay 30 quid or 40 quid and you get a certificate of incorporation. There's my baby, there's my company. And, and then you develop it, but straight away when you develop a, a company, it has a brand, it has an identity, it has its own personality that is necessarily separate from you. And I, I had this kind of strange dance of realizing that actually my company, so-called company was this global tolerance and it had a lot of the same values as me, but it's also not me. And its voice is different to my voice. A little bit like having a child. Yeah, there's kind of oh, the similar eyes, similar laugh, similar kind of um, idiosyncrasies, but we're not the same. And I felt that this um, kind of culture and cult of ownership of entitlement is a big part of the societal problems that we that we find ourselves in. We accumulate so much material wealth and material stuff. You know, we're speaking on Black Friday, for goodness sake, which is very much about this. Um, can we accumulate as much stuff as possible so that we can own it and then, and then compare ourselves to those that do not, rather than a more uh, justice-based distribution of wealth, because there's enough stuff to go around if only we would share it. Um, and so I, I felt that I didn't want to succumb to that societal cult of ownership. I felt I didn't own global toler tolerance. I feel like it's kind of the, the, the mentality of a psychotic to think that someone could own global tolerance in a way. Like who owns tolerance? And so I didn't want to be that person. And so I felt like a parent, I'm a steward of this being. It's 10 years old, 11 years old. What's the most responsible thing I can do to set it forth on its path? And that vision of global tolerance was way bigger than me and my sense of entitlement that I should try and pocket a million dollars or a million pounds in order to fulfill my own personal journey. The journey of global tolerance felt much more important. And that's why I decided to go on that journey of giving it away rather than selling it. Wow, sounds like a, an incredible journey and a, a rocky journey as well. And another thing that you, you've done in your career is that you've worked with, with the Dalai Lama, uh, with, like the Dalai Lama, which is quite, it's quite impressive because he's like up there, he's like, um, he's, like a, he's nearly God basically. But what exactly were you, were you doing for him? Why, why, what, yeah, what were you doing for him? So there was an event um, at the Golden Temple in Amritsar, which is this incredible Sikh place of worship, worship um, in northern India. And he was the co-host with the Sikh community of this week-long event called The Case for Love and Forgiveness. And my company was hired to manage all of the communications for that event. And I was the representative in India, so on the ground there. And so it was my job to, um, to set up all of the interviews for His Holiness, to manage the press conference and to manage all of the media inquiries and the interviews for the whole event. Wow. Um, on, your, on your website, it says that, um, yeah, well, I've, I've read that you, you love to spread messages. I mean, you spread the message of hope, happiness, of truth. So if you were to spend the rest of your life communicating one message to everyone, what message would that be and why? Mm, thank you. Well, um, 
one of the most incredible people that, that I've worked with and continue to is a lady called Dr. Jenny Stepanek, who uh, is a peacemaker and her mum, sorry, her, her son, she had four children who all unfortunately passed away from a rare neuromuscular disease. Um, uh, one of her sons is Matty J.T. Stepanek, who was a poet and peacemaker and philosopher, seven times New York Times bestselling author, and he died a couple of weeks before his 14th birthday. So he's the same age as you, um, Alex, and he was an incredible young man and, and prophet. And a lot of Jenny's philosophy is based upon and expands upon Matty's own philosophy. And I've worked with Jenny over many years and she has been, whenever I meet her and whenever I see that she sees anyone, everyone is left with the same message. It doesn't matter who they are. And that message that she says is, you matter. And when I first met her, I thought that's a lovely thing to say. Isn't that sweet? Isn't that quaint? Isn't that lovely and empowering and inspiring? But I've been on a bit of a personal journey myself this year, as many people have over lockdown. And I went on a, a five day retreat that I recently returned from. And I, I realized that for much of my life, and I'm 41 now, for much of my life, I've been going around with this deep held belief that I don't matter, that I'm not worthy of love. And I don't believe that anymore. And I feel that a lot of damage is done in this world by people who go around feeling in their hearts that they don't matter. And that feeling of insecurity or inadequacy is then projected and manifests as anger or jealousy or hatred or um, an imposition or can beat other people down. Or even as for, for me, I went through, have been going through my career with the intention, the good intention of helping people and helping others, but still from that place of insecurity. And so I feel that now that I do deeply believe that I do matter, I am in a much better place to be of benefit to this world, which is my ultimate aspiration and inspiration. And so I feel that this message, the simple message in two words, you matter, is probably the most important message of our times. Because if that message can penetrate the hearts of seven and a half billion people, that we really deeply feel that you matter, the implications of that, if I matter, so must you matter. And so must the Dalai Lama matter. And so must the person on the street matter, and that woman, and that black person, and that immigrant, and that other person. We must matter as much necessarily as everyone else. And Matty Stepanek said that we are a mosaic of gifts. Each and every one of us are a single, perfect, irreplaceable part of the mosaic of life. And that for me, if we can really let that message into our hearts, then the choices that we make are based upon that belief in justice and equality, that the world will be a better place as a result. Wow, such a, such a deep and um, <clears throat> strong message there, which uh, all of you could take. Remember, you guys matter, you will matter. <laughs> so, uh, thank you, Simon. It's been a, a real pleasure to speak to you, to speak to such um, an inspiring person and to hear your, your thoughts and all the, um, the things that you stand for. That, that saying, you matter, really deep and really strong and i think that people can really can really use that because it's a really strong message it's been a real pleasure to speak to you and i hope you've enjoyed the interview um thanks thank for your time you. thank you